Every day. <laughs> it's an every day. <laughs> now, people, the video that you saw at the start of this is of a man that works in Jamaica. He's actually a cabbie. One of the few decent cabbies that are out there doing their job, respecting the rules and laws of the road, making sure people reach about their business in a safe manner. However, this man almost lost his life. Like you can see, he is in the hospital, badly injured, almost lost him life at the hands of one of his co-workers, an ex cabby man, what them call the rogue cabby. The average typical cabbie that is out there, reckless, do not regard the rules and laws of the road or anything. Them just are there out there, a run and a fly, like some sorts of mad bat out of hell. Almost take out two people before, and then him almost take out this man. This cabbie is on the run from the popo once again, one more time. It is his habit. He almost take out this man, the man almost lose him life. So the video where you see is the man in the hospital talking to his girlfriend or wife. Take a listen, take a look to a voice note that he sent me explaining everything in intricate details and then I'll give my piece. Yes, General, morning and big up yourself in the morning. Yeah, man, send us some photo, that's me. Yeah, man, I don't know anything he said. Morning, I'm time, that's my name. But I, I, I'm a taxi operator. On the top driver as well. A lot of people know me as Gary RQ. Well, go on with me, I know, you know. On the 13th of this month, April, it's a Saturday, I was up by the Portmore Mall. You know, I do my regular routine, I operate my taxi and thing. And the bus lay by. So when the bus and pull up now, passengers come out of the bus, you go to them and ask if they're going on the 20 or if they're going on the 17. I was going on the 20 this morning, so 17 bus pull up. So I went across and I talked to the passenger. So I got two passengers. Normally, when the bus come, if you get a one passenger, you point them to your car and then walk, go to your car and then you search for the next passenger. But I got two same time and I had one in the car. So even if I didn't get anybody else, I would just go. So now I got these two passengers walking in front of the JTC bus going across to my car to put them in. A taxi man from nowhere, full blast coming down the bus lay by. Radam, hit me. I tell you the truth, General. I had an out of body experience because I know I saw my, I was in the air, I was in the air looking down on myself on the ground fighting to get up. I can see myself pushing myself up and falling back down, pushing myself up, falling back down and then boom. Next thing I know I was in the back of the same car that hit me down, heading to the hospital. Yeah man, the driver that hit me down, he took me to the hospital still. At first I thought it was like, you know, yeah man, I'm a, a Yota. I mean, it's a Yota I talk to, you know, I warned him many, many times about the speeding in the bus lane. I actually hit down a man in January named Shaba. In January, hit him down and mash up the car, same left side. Still have on the, the, the mash up fender. He changed the fender and put on the black fender and, you know, quite a few could do the windows back on, so the windscreen. I would spoke to him and said, Bridget, and cut this shucks, man. Stop speeding in the bus lane, man. I'm saying, no, I threw well, them, they're going to go easy. And see there, three months later, me, man, come lit down and mash up. So, when he took me to the hospital, and they was there with me all through till after five, I was thinking to myself, so, well, I'm really, you know, sorry about what I'm doing, you know, I'm uh, try and make amends. When we check out the ratio, he's actually hiding from the police. You get me? He used that as a ploy to hide from the police. As soon as he went back to Greater Portmore, he was held by the police and he seized the car. <coughs> car was at Anjaman until Wednesday of this week when it got released. You get me our Tuesday. And he's back on the road running taxi like nothing happened, you get me? So, I understand when they say police and taxi man have a cat and mouse relationship. Love and hate. But taxi man and taxi man is even more dangerous than police and taxi man because this is how they operate to get me because I actually lost my life 
Yeah, me falls for grace of God, I wouldn't be here now sending you messages and still tuning into your, your channel, they get me. Yeah, man, I just got my story that still get me, so. But that's Spanish town at the moment. I have a broken arm. I fractured my neck five places. I'm due to the operation in the coming week at, um, at KPH, because that's where the bone specialist is, so I'll be uh, getting a transfer back there. And hopefully, with God's grace, uh, everything works out how it works out to get me to the operation successfully. No um, fallout from the operation, like, you know, any bad uh, meds or batch operation, you know, I'm just praying that everything do good and do the right way so I can start the healing process. Cause it's gonna take me a long time to heal and so you get me. But you know, I got a good woman by my side, you get me? Strong woman. She's been there from with me from day one until now. She's the one that comes to the hospital. Feed me, bathe me and keep give me some time. You get me? I have my two kids them with her and she you know, I get to call them and speak with them. They, you know, my eldest daughter she's eight, she understands what's going on, but my son is three is just not seeing me. He keeps asking me every time he sees what happened. Daddy, what happened? And we keep explaining to him I was in an accident. But yeah, when you talk about taxi man, man, I tell him, man, because he said police are come. So I run from police. And police are not busy with him because when they hit me down, the police are going more than business. They get me down, they're not busy with him at all. Yes, when police are come, sometimes we run and get to a car and speed off from the bus bay, but we do it with caution. But this man is not supposed to be on the road. They get me. His name is Damien Hemmings. You get me? I was so out of it. I'm trying to get his details also because I was in the hospital and um, it, the report was made by 100 man. You get me? So they have the, they have the, they have the file over there. So it's when, I'm, when I finish doing everything, uh, my operation and I'm able to move around, I'll go over to the 100 man and then give them my statement and then get some photo of his driver's license and the rest of his information. But at the moment, I don't have any of that, and you get me. So I'm working on that now. Get my baby mother to go around by the station and see if she can get some information on him. So, yeah, because I'm going to insurance. Because I told him straight, and I said, oh, I'll be straight with you. I don't want you to spend a dollar. You get me. The operation will cost me over 150000 And I said, I don't want a dollar from me. I'll go through the insurance. Yeah, man, we we'll have to put that stop to the youth because. Let me say, I'm not the first, I'm the second person. I don't know how much other person before that because if it's something that he does regular and pay off the people him, it won't come in, it won't, they, you know, it won't be a report about it. So I'm just a sound it out now. So bless up yourself. Now people, like I've always said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. The same applies as it pertains to the relevant authority. It is these of um, repeat offenders that are out there that are causing injuries and D-E-A-T-H. Driving around with reckless, reckless abandonment, if that is the word. People, when you listen to this man that is the victim, he sounds eloquent, he sounds decent. This is not the prototypical taxi man that we know about. And I am not saying that these taxi man, they are fully done. Me just at all about their action, how they operate on the road. So this man known as Mr. Hamilton, government name Gary, he is a trucker, a taxi driver. The experience that he's explaining is on the 13th of April 2024. Like you hear him say, him get blindsided. He had an out of body experience. That means uh, you're almost dead. You go to heaven and you come back. You are lucky to be alive. Credit where credit is due. At least the taxi man will lick him down, did the decent thing. He took him to the hospital. However, he is still on the run. This is not his first parade as like you hear the man say him lick down a man named Shabbat before and then him dip on the run from the popo. He was held by the popo, taken to 100 man lane. However, he is back on the road to do the same thing again. Like me say, the definition of insanity. 
Why is it that these relevant authority don't check these people's driver's license, make sure that they are locked up, make sure that they pay for their crime in time or in money or in deeds? So people, like you hear this man explain, he is not the first person that this man lit down. This man is now in another hospital, broken arm, his neck fractured five different places, doing some sorts of operation. We know how these hospitals in Jamaica operate. I'm just saying you can go in in a decent condition and come back out in a worsera condition. So this man is explaining the healing process. Had it not been for the love of God and a strong woman by his side, he is suffering, he is healing. What happened to the man that caused all of this? He is out on the road giving bail again as a repeat offender to go out and do the wrong thing once again. It is business as usual. You hear the man say him lick down a purse before, the poor poor hold him and then the poor poor let him back out. The name of this man, Mr. Damian Hemmings, and I am talking to the relevant authority. You have a taxi man out there named Damian Hemmings. He should not be on the road. This man is a menace to society. This man is going to cause people to get injured or even lose their life. So therefore, do something before he does something wassera to somebody else. Point blank and period. So the next thing that is popping in the news, we see that the whole hooligans, the whole tegareg, the whole pit bull, the whole vagabond them in a high school, they are back at it once more again. I am speaking about a FIGHT that took place at one of our traditional high school. May I talk about Meadowbrook High School right there upon Flemington Drive, somewhere about those vicinity. Meadowbrook Main or Meadowbrook Avenue, one of those I used to live in that vicinity. Now people, like me said, these two students attend Meadowbrook High School. There are at least two videos that are out there. In the first video, these two girls were on the ground rolling like two P-I-T-B-U-L-L-S. Of course, you know that the students that are probably just like them were cheering, they were dancing, they were screaming, they were having a grand time. As if a some sort of exciting episode in a life. Meanwhile, teachers, maybe about two to three of them, try to separate these two vagabond now people. Me no know who wrong, me no know who was defending themselves. Me just sat based on the videos that I saw that were about 30 seconds or so long. Both of them 30 seconds or more long. So the teacher separated them. However, it seems as if part two continued out of the school. The first part was in the school, right in front of some sorts of classroom. I guess the teacher was there right on spot for kind of try to separate them, which they did. However, in a part two, it was not a fear F-I-G-H-T as a matter of fact. The darker looking child pretty much was giving the other one a royal B-E-A-T down. She was being thrown, tossed, lick, MMA, Tyson. You name it, she was getting an onslaught. She was getting the whole catalog. People, I felt very sorry for this child. She realized that she was no sorts of match after about 30 seconds or so of intense B-E-A-T down. She then walked away in shame and the next girl said, You know who me is. Of course, you know that the other students were cheering. Nobody tried to intervene. It's one thing that I've learned and seen to be very disturbing in a D's F-I-G-H-T. It seems as if nobody parts F-I-G-H-T anymore. They just wait till either one individual submit, tap out, lose them life, get badly injured that they cannot move, be unconscious, out of their consciousness, upon the ground. Nobody seems to care. Everybody is intent in seeing this excitement. So therefore, nobody cares if anybody loses their life or gets badly injured. And such is the case in a lot of the cases that we've seen, especially as it pertains to Irwin High School. Think the youth's name, 15-year-old or 14-year-old Mr. Plummer. 15-year-old Mr. Plummer. People, 
I don't know what is wrong with these children. I don't know what type of home they come from. However, wherever them come from, them need to go back. I think that the relevant authority, meaning the education ministry, meaning the school, they need to start banning some of these children. They need to take extreme action and people are going to say, well, if you kick them out of school, them only will get worse. So what are we supposed to do? Leave them in the school so therefore they can bully and B-E-A-T down the other decent children out there. So just imagine you send your children to school for learn, get some sorts of education and all they are getting is some royal B-E-A-T down, losing their life, getting badly injured. People, this has to stop. You have to take some sorts of drastic action or else something is going to do some of these kids very badly. Point blank and period. So anyways, people, thanks once again for checking out my video. If you appreciate videos like these, Please show your appreciation by liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing to my channel. That is how YouTube promotes videos like these to like-minded, sensible persons like yourself. Bless up.